I have been playing with this program called Midjourney. It's an AI that generates art through word prompts. It's currently in open beta and I have a few hours in it already and it's pretty shocking. You throw in some words of whatever you want the AI to imagine and then give it a minute to work and it spits out some thumbnails. And it's really impressive what it generates. Then with those thumbnails, you can either work from there, upscaling or making it generate more versions until you get something good. This tech has got me really excited and of course, the question I ask myself is, how can I use this for mini painting? Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. This AI art is pretty phenomenal. It uses text to image synthesis, which converts language text into realistic images. And it's pretty good. The way to think about it is that you're asking the program, what do you think this looks like? Here is what the AI thought. A small goblin wearing a Chinese takeout bag, very realistic, looked like. He's pretty cute. Here's what the AI thought. A monster with huge teeth, very detailed, desolate background looked like. And yeah, it got it exactly right. And here is what the AI came up with for the prompt goo fawn bird. A really strange collection of words, but it came up with something really nice. It's not perfect, but it's pretty amazing that in just a few seconds, you can go from a nugget of an idea in your head to looking at a fully realized image on your computer. And I think this could be a valuable tool for coming up with color schemes on miniatures. Picking color schemes is a really hard thing to do. How do you pick what color that you're gonna be using on your minis from now on? I always do it right off the top of my head and sometimes that works out great, but sometimes not. It worked out really well for these Tau Stealth suits. The bright red and bright green contrast really nicely off of each other. But on these Jeans Dealer cultists with dark blue, cold purple, dark red and gray, all these mid-tone colors make for a model that has poor readability. On these Tempesta Scions, the high contrast colors with light blue and light red really makes them feel grim dark while still being really readable but a similar style is let down by color choice. On these Sisters Novitiates, their bright saturated colors doesn't really match the sculpt and kind of makes these grim dark ecclesiarchal soldiers look like toys. So colors are hard and the AI seems pretty good at picking colors that work well together and make for a cohesive piece. And that is just what I need because I have an army that needs coloring. I have been collecting this gray net army for about three years now and my idea was that I would buy and build everything and then paint it all at once. I want the army to be completely cohesive with a really unique paint scheme compared to my other armies. With those collections, I painted them as I got them and everything looks a little different. I want these figures to be perfect. The paint scheme idea I had in my head was to just do a little better job of the Games Workshop box art, silver, white, and red. But maybe there's a better, more interesting idea out there and maybe the AI can help me think of it. And in addition to my granite test model, I also wanna try a piece that is truly random where the AI comes up with something and I just do it sit down and try and replicate it. The only problem with that idea is that if I'm the one giving the text prompt, it won't be truly random. So I'm gonna get Nick in here to generate an image so I have absolutely no control over it. I would like to introduce you to the Mid Journey bot. Awesome. This is the AI that will generate whatever we want. Okay, so I want a knight from the future. I want it in the style of digit, digital art. A glowing sword because of their power mm, weapons. Of Actually, they're force weapons. And I want it in 16 by 9. Boom. Takes like a couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and as you see, those, those <laughs> powdery, powdery images are what it thinks those things are. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, we're going. Yeah, and so it slowly refreshes yeah. and it gets better and better. And it's impossible not to stop staring, staring at, at it, it and right. looking at it. 95. Ooh, it's getting close. All right. All right, let's take a look at these. Ooh. Oh my goodness. I'm incredibly torn between this that, one yeah. and this one. That one's so cool. Yeah. I mean, you have more colors to choose from if you go with I the think. one on the bottom. Well, what I can do, I like this one. Yeah. But I don't know if I love everything about it. Yeah. So I can, this is one, two, three, four. I can tell it to give me more versions of four. Okay. Here we go. Oh, oh, there we go. Now we're talking. Okay. That's All right. Quick. Damn. All right. <laughs> oh, this this one I like a lot. Yeah. I like this one a lot too. I think yeah, I would go with that. I'm one. gonna say this one, and now we can upscale it, and it'll kind of finish it off and add in even more details. So I want to upscale option one, and when it upscales, it just makes the image larger, 
and then it adds in more details as it thinks of them. Oh, and it, it added a lot of like texture. It did to it. Oh, it added a lot of texture, and it's gorgeous. I could, I could, I could gray knight <laughs> that. I could gray knight that. All right, why don't why don't you give it a All shot? Right. So you have to type slash imagine. Imagine goblin wearing a Lay's potato chip bag oh, on horse. a horse. Photo realistic. Oh boy. <laughs> I have no earthly idea. I, I have no idea either. I bet it's very different from the <laughs> yeah. one I generated. <laughs> Oh god. Oh my gosh. I'm scared. <laughs> I am too. Oh my, oh my god. god. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a wonton. Well, that's the winner yeah, right there. Easily. Oh my god. It made a potato chip bag. It did. It did. It made a potato chip bag. It didn't know what Lay's was. Yeah. Aww. Oh. It's kind of cute. A nice, it's a very nice horse. And you know what? That is a very nice chip bag goblin. It is. It is. All right. Well, those yeah, are awesome. our two images. <laughs> you watched us do it. And that <laughs> generated us a punky sci-fi knight and a wonton <laughs> riding a horse. Yeah. A friendly little horse. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I have my AI inspired artwork, so let's see what happens. Looking at this image, I see really dramatic lighting with a speckly, dotty, abstract style on the body of the figure with a really smooth vertical blends on his sword that stand out against the craziness of the rest of the model. So bright light blues and bright reds. That's what I have to try and replicate. I kept the base simple, just a little super glue, and then I sprinkled on a few grains of sand and attached my gray knight. I primed the model black. A lot of this model will be very dark, so I want to work up from a black base. Then I did a zenithal highlight of white paint only from the top left of the mini, so the head and left shoulder took the brunt of this white paint. Now the lighting was good, but I want to apply a little texture, so I put some white paint on my palette and picked it up with a really ratty brush. Then I stippled and dry brushed this all over the mini. In random patterns, it looks a little crazy now, but in the end, it'll add a nice effect. This is a process called undercoating. Instead of just priming it, maybe doing a zenithal and then working on my base coats, I'm actually using white and black to create textures and highlights that I want to carry through to the end product. It'll probably be a little subtle, but it's really nice to have it there to work off of. Now, time for some color. I worked so hard on the undercoat, I want to apply transparent paint over top so I don't just cover it up. Artist inks are a great tool for this. If you look at the backs of the bottles, they tell you how opaque or transparent they are. And they get even more transparent when applied through the airbrush. You can just spray less and get even more see-through layers. I put some light blue into my airbrush and sprayed this over the bright white zenithal. Then I put some dark blue ink and sprayed this over the rest of the night. And then some red. I sprayed this over the base and over the Grey Knight's text that is etched into the armor. And he's already looking a little bit like the AI artwork the color scheme was inspired by. I set up my palette with red, yellow, blue, purple, and light blue, a very cold palette. Then I took that dark purple and began shading all the darkest areas of the armor. Then I took the blue and glazed that where my light blue ink and dark blue ink met. I put red over all the text of the armor. This is the brightest red I own, but it took a lot of coats to get it anywhere near as saturated as the original image. I have quite a few hours playing with the AI arts and it's pretty darn cool. I really like digital painting. I've done quite a bit of it. And what was kind of weirding me out the first time I was playing with it is it can create way better stuff than I can ever draw. But after doing a whole bunch of research, watching a lot of videos, reading a lot of articles, it was kind of nice to see that everybody was actually kind of digging on it. And there weren't a lot of doomsday sayers saying that this is going to destroy arts or that all artists are now going to be out of a job because it's really just a tool. It's going to speed up the process of making digital paintings and it's going to get rid of a lot of busy work. I am really, really digging it. And I think it's going to be really cool to see how I can use it to miniature paint. Obviously, it doesn't have a ton of like direct applications, but 
I mean, presumably one day there will be an AI for sculpture. And so you'll be able to throw some keywords into some sort of a sculpting AI. Barbarian, sword in the left hand, axe in the right hand, standing on a tactical rock. And it'll be able to make something. And that will be really, really cool. The final touches for this fella was doing lots and lots and lots of dots. I made small dots of very light blue and white all over the mini. This is what I saw when I looked at the AI image and it looks really nice in the model. It kind of looks like many dings and scratches reflecting the dramatic lighting that's being cast on the model. And it makes for a subtle, more interesting outline to the armor pieces than just a typical edge highlight. On the sword, I switched up the painting style and globbed on a big coat of wet white paint and then some streaks of blue paint and then I wet blended them together by making long dragging strokes. It's always interesting painting with a reference and this is a reference that I kind of made. I mean, the AI did all the work. But when I was making the AI make the image, I had an idea in my head. And now the, the AI has created an image that I'm looking at now. And whenever you're working with reference material, which you should, if you want to grow and get better as an artist, it's always a good idea to not use minis as reference. I mean, sometimes you can and you should. But uh, if you are not using a miniature as reference, you have to make a lot more decisions and extrapolations based on what you're looking at. In the image, I see leather and I see light interacting with that leather. How can I use my paint medium to recreate that? Or how do I want to recreate the look that I'm seeing and interpreting in my own mind? And how do I recreate that on the miniature? I was nearing the end of this gray night with the AI paint scheme and I painted the rim of the base black. This was really, really interesting. If I sat down to paint up test models for my Grey Knights yesterday, I would not have painted it like this, but it turned out really good. The sort of abstract stippling and highlighting highlights the shapes and pose really well instead of the model getting bogged down in all its details. And changing up the style from stippling to blending for the Nemesis Force Halberd really makes it stand out, even though it's all the same colors that are already on the model. This worked out great. As a test, I am pretty satisfied. The prompt was Night, Future, Digital Art, Glowing Sword, and this is exactly that. I feel like the scheme, even though it's simple and it doesn't have the free handing decals and metallics that you'd imagine from the Grey Knights, I feel like this might actually be a better representation of the mysterious Grey Knights, a secret organization of psychic soldiers who protect the universe from demons without anybody even knowing they exist. I think I might do another test model and try to introduce another color, maybe hot pink for the swords and eyes. But I think I have my scheme. Now it's time to work on Nick's prompt. All right, well, it is time to paint <laughs> the fried wonton on a horse. Boy, I cannot wait to see what happens. What I see when I look at this image is much more photorealistic than the last one. It has bright colors and is very evenly lit, like the subject is being lit by the sun. It has some abstract elements, but I think that's more down to the imperfections of the AI than the actual piece being abstract. I have the perfect mini to try and replicate this art, a little gabo on a squig. I glued him down to the base and then poured on more glue and sprinkled some sand to blend the little mushroom detail into the base. Then I primed the mini black, but I decided to go a different route than on the night. I put white paint on my palette, loaded up the brush, and then dragged the bristles over the model laying down thick streaks of white paint. And you know what else has thick streaks? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have lots of cool STLs ready to populate your wargaming tables. New this month, we have a bound demon complete with ball gag, and we have portable modular trenches ready to crisscross your battlefields. If you sign up, there's a welcome pack that includes Dawn of War Space Marine, Imperial Guard, and Eldar Terrain, all hosted by comics, games, and things. We also make Patreon-exclusive videos where we critique viewer models and weekly Discord hangouts. We also have merch, link in the description. I covered about 95% of the model with this highlight, leaving only the deepest recesses black. This is also undercoating. Just like I did on the last model, that reference material, the AI generated image had really dramatic lighting. And so I replicated that with the airbrush Zenithal. This model, this reference has very even lighting. And so, and it has a sort of a painterly texture to it. And so I've tried to replicate that with dry brushing. There are lots and lots of different ways to do undercoating and all of them yield slightly different results. And so it's fun to play with all of them and see the different results that you can get. I loaded up my palette with a tan, a yellow, a green, some red, black, and brown. I mixed the red and green together to make a brownish grayish color. And then I watered it down a lot and I used this to do some shading on the goblin's robes. I wanted a brown without a lot of warmth. So this will change the black into a nice brown. Then I put an orange wash over the robes to change the white dry brushing into light orange so that there was no white showing through. 
Then I mix together the light tan, white and yellow and thin it down with water and glaze this over the raised areas of the robes to try and pull off that potato chip color. Next, I stippled on some tan paint mixed with white, making lots and lots of small dots, which will add up to that chip texture that I'm going for. Then some more stippling of pure white to get that golden brown contrast from bright orange in the recesses all the way up to that shiny salt white. Now for the face. The AI image gave the bag dark beige goblin ears, so on this gobbo, I glazed beige over his face, hands, and feet. Then I glazed brown over his skin to darken it, and then a final highlight of the original beige color, applying less paint than before so all my other layers are still present. I don't know if I achieved the crispiness of the reference material, but I think I've gotten pretty darn close to the correct colors. Yellow is a really hard color to replicate. Light colors in general tend to be really, really hard to paint with. Light color paint tends to have white in it. And so that means that it covers really, really well, which means it's really hard to glaze with because the, it, you have to thin it down a lot further before it becomes as transparent as a darker color like a blue or a red. On his trusty steed, I glazed a reddish brown over the whole body. The wateriness of the paint made sure that the white dry brushing showed through. Then I did a second coat of brown mixed with black. And then a glazing of pure black on the belly and back of the squig. In the reference, the horse has a slight blue reflection in its fur, so I added some blue to the black and glazed this over the shoulders of the squig. Then for his one big eye, I painted a big dot of black, leaving the white showing around the bottom, then a little bit of blue on the bottom half, and then a dot of white in the top half of the eyeball. The horse's teeth are not visible in the AI image, so I chose to replicate the slightly yellowed parchment background and put this color over the teeth on the squig. Then on the base, I stippled with a small dry brush alternating between green, blue, and yellow to replicate that small patch of prairie the horse and his chip are sitting in, and I blended it out using that parchment colored paint. Now to finish it off with a few special effects, a couple of small green grass tufts here and there, and then I brushed on a little wood glue and applied some static grass. This model is very unique, but you know what? It works. The prompt was Goblin wearing a Lay's potato chip bag on a horse, photorealistic. And I can see the reference in the finished piece. I don't know if it's just that this is a great model and would look good in any color, but I think this scheme really takes advantage of the model. The light yellow Goblin pops on the dark brown squig, and the dark squig pops on the light tan base. It all comes together and is really readable. This was a strange project. Painting horses and lace potato chip goblins, but I can't argue with the results. I can imagine an army of goblins like this and it would look pretty good. Squigs are usually bright red, but brown kind of makes them look more natural, like a real creature. And the more realistic yellow makes a little bit more sense than the bright, vibrant yellow of typical gloom spite gets. Good job, AI. These are two very different models. I would not have painted them this way if I did not challenge myself. The Grey Knight probably would have looked like the box art and the Squig Hopper would have probably looked like all my other orcs. But having gone through the challenge of replicating what the AI came up with, I learned so much and I can now take that new knowledge and those experiences and use them in my standard day-to-day -day painting. The Mid Journey Bot is really amazing. Here are some of the other things we've come up with just screwing around with the app. The prompt on this was goblin, green, smiling, showing teeth, long arms, short legs, white hair, black clothing, smoking cigar, digital art. This one is wienermobile, on fire, in the woods, watercolor. A very scary looking fella from the prompt space marine, grim dark, digital art, very detailed. On this one we gave the AI comic book art, orc smiling with a top hat, on a stage, dressed as a clown, and look at him go. And another prompt that might make for a good 40k thing, medieval warrior wearing large armor, heavy, shiny, reflective, the moon in the background, dangerous. What made this project really fun was that it forced me out of my comfort zone and to try new things. Things I didn't have any say over what happened, and in the end, it led to some new experiences for me. Also, Mid Journey Beta is free. It uses Discord and you can go try it out right now yourself. I need to go generate some more images right now. Bye bye.